Welcome back to the Chat Time Pod. It's your host, Red. I got a video today from Patient Zenya. Um, this one, she made a video uh, kind of like debating you know, red pill, blue pill topics. And she hit, a, she hit a big nerve for red pillars. And I actually agree with her with her sentiments on this. So uh, please like and subscribe down below. I'd really appreciate that. Let's get to that chow. It's chow time. Hello my dears, welcome back to another video. So you might remember that I made a video recently where I critiqued some of the toxic sides of feminism along with some of the toxic sides of the red pill. Now the feedback to that video has been interesting because I'm quite used to feminists being upset with me at this point, you know, it's like I'm, I'm used to it now. And so I anticipated that because I was criticizing both the feminists and the red pill, that I would, of course, spark a bit of outrage between the two. And so I kind of braced myself for equal impacts or like roughly equal impact. Mm -hmm. But you know what's crazy? The feminists were actually on their best behavior for some reason. I actually barely got any outrage from the feminists in my last video, which was really interesting because I did get some criticism from the feminists. Their main critique of me was that they felt like I was only highlighting the negative sides of feminism. They were like, what about the other parts of feminism that are really good? Not all feminists, you know, that was kind of the energy they were giving. When feminists are talking about men and saying men are this, men are that, men do this, men do that. And the men go, not all men, you guys get frustrated and you're like, come on guys, I think you guys should know that we obviously don't mean all men. That's usually your rebuttal. So what I would say to those feminists is, use your own logic in this situation and then maybe that will help us resolve any problems you know what i, I mean agree. so annoyingly my audio cut off here but basically what i was saying was i didn't get as much criticism from feminists as i was expecting but the red pill fans definitely had a lot more to say so i thought i hate to say it but i feel like a lot of people in the manosphere on the red pill especially people that just joined i still have a lot of anger and frustration towards the opposite sex and it really shows in the comments too so. I would read the most common criticisms that I got from them and just kind of react to them just because I thought it'd be fun why not and I also thought it would be a good opportunity for me to fill in some gaps as well because I didn't get to say everything that I wanted to say in my last video because I felt like it was too long so I feel like this is a good opportunity for me to kind of add a bit more to my original video all right so this person had multiple criticisms so we're going to break them down because all of his criticisms were very common criticisms that I saw within my comments so he says Outside of reproduction doesn't equal outside of water. That's a wrong comparison and it's childish. Yeah, it's funny that now men don't understand. <laughs> don't understand the uh, the comparison or the metaphor that, that she was using. It just made me laugh when I heard this. Personally, I think the whole men versus women thing in general, to be honest, is very childish. Like, it's cute when you're like 10 years old and still in school, like on the playground, like, you know, boys versus girls, boys have germs. But like, when you're still talking like that as an adult, I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty embarrassing, do you know what I mean? But in regards to the whole needing water does not equal needing women. Now, there were quite a few people actually, surprisingly, who didn't understand my argument here. So they think that I'm saying that n a man not needing a woman is equal to him not needing water, oxygen or food. But that was not the argument that I was making at all. I thought it was clear, but since it clearly wasn't, I'll try again. What I was criticizing in that part of the video was the idea of creating a hypothetical distorted reality in order to make your argument make sense. And the reason why I got really ridiculous with the examples that I was using was to prove that if you start creating distorted hypothetical realities, you can make the most ridiculous things make sense. But anyways, he continues. You're just I mean, this is how feminists on the other side rationalize a lot of the things that they say. So the red pillars are doing the same thing. This is why a lot of women do say that red pill is just the opposite, the opposition of feminism, and we operate very similarly just for men. And I can see how some of us are like that. And I'm, I'm hoping to enlighten some men's minds a little bit, saying like, yeah, men are very top dog when it comes to a lot of things. But women are also top dog when it comes to a lot of things. This is why there's two different sexes. It's not that men can do everything. In a sense, yeah, but you're going to die alone and you still need certain things from women, period. 
if you want kids, if you want other things. In society nowadays, we're fully intermingled. It's not like hunter and gatherer days before. It's literally fully intermingled. Our economies, our infrastructure is fully intermingled with men and women. As much as men want to say that infrastructure and everything will still run perfectly fine without women, you guys are kind of idiots. Just triggered that men can survive without women. But yes, we can. You can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I, I get why people bring up that point because survival wise if we were to put them on an island yes men will survive women won't but that is also a very different scenario than how real life is this is where she's saying when we use the argument you know if everything was to shut down all the men would survive and all the women would struggle yes most likely yes but that doesn't happen in current society Women thrive, men thrive. And if men disappeared, women would struggle. And if women disappeared, men would struggle. Remember, there's child care. There's hospitals. There's still 20% of certain industries that are women. Very few industries can lose 20% of their workforce and still be a good industry. I mean, personally, I would argue that you sound very triggered. But anyways, he continues. Women don't dominate healthcare. Men also do healthcare jobs. If you want to argue the point, show more studies and data, not just your friends who work in the care industry or some exceptions. See, that if you was want a some stupid data one. to reference. Like, it's obvious that women dominate the fucking healthcare industry. Too, then here you go. Now, my source is the UK National Health Service, a.k.a. the NHS. I don't know about you, but I would say, I would say, yeah, that's pretty dominant. If you want to dispute the NHS on those figures, you're more than welcome to. Although I do think you'll struggle considering they are the UK's health institution. So I think they know who works for them, but you know best. So by all means, you can do it. I need to be more serious because these people are really upset. But the reason why it's just so funny to me is because in my video, I never say that women are more important than men. I literally say that men and women are both equally important and both equally need each other, but it still makes them angry. Like it just blows my- It's because they're arguing against men. Anything that puts men down a notch, men will get upset. Anything you put women down a notch, women would get upset people just don't as like an overarching the people don't like being told that they're wrong men or women or that you know there's something better that than what they're doing or thinking my mind now one of the most popular comments i got from these red pill guys was just like men don't need women we can survive without women blah blah blah, blah. like they really try to drum that home i'll be honest I in this aspect there's two different ways I go about it like if civilization was just to restart again and we had nothing no technology no nothing yes men would do quite well a, a good amount of men but then there's a good amount of men that would just straight up die too and there'd be a very small portion of women that can do it but in today's society we're, we're pretty equal we're both they're both so necessary to make the economy work now because it's been almost a hundred years since we've intermingled between each other and in, in in industries and in work. There's certain work that only women do. There's work that men created because we needed a certain amount of work done, but we knew it was too easy of work for men to do, so they created it for women. But it is still an essential work because if these women didn't do this particular work, the men can't do their side of work. This is the part where men are so dumb. We're so dumb. We think we're top alpha. We think we can do everything and that we can't. This is why workloads get split. This is why we have opposite sex. Yes. I mean, she goes through it really well, so. I do wonder how much of this is just a misunderstanding between me and the red pill. Because when they say that men don't need women, I'm not sure if they're talking about strictly within the romantic context or if they mean it within the societal context. Because 
It seems they really mean it in a societal context, in my opinion. It seems to me as though what they mean is that men don't need relationships. But then they'll start talking about societal things like infrastructure and how men do all these jobs in society and those jobs in society. But what's the relevance of all of that? So I guess I'm just a bit confused as to what exactly the red pill are arguing, because if they're arguing that men don't need women in a romantic context, then I'm going to need them to use examples that are relevant to a romantic context. But seeing as I've seen red pillars say, well, if women disappear tomorrow, society would be completely fine, it would keep running, I have to assume that you mean this on a societal level, and therefore I very strongly disagree with you. Agree. Believe it or not, I, this whole theory that if women disappear lasting. tomorrow, society would be perfectly fine, has actually been tested. Now red pillars might not be aware of this history but luckily I am so let me give you a very quick very short history lesson. This be it was the year 1975 in Iceland. Now for my British viewers I'm talking about the country not the shop down the high street. The women of Iceland <laughs> were unsatisfied and unhappy with the way they were being dismissed in society and how all of their contributions in society were being completely disregarded. But of course they were met with the same kind of rhetoric and the same kind of attitude, which is the idea that if women disappear tomorrow, society would be perfectly fine. So of course they didn't really care to try and meet their demands because they didn't really think that women were that important in society. So what did the women of Iceland do? Well, they went on strike for just one day. So what they did was they refused to do any of their paid work. They also refused to do any childcare or any household duties. They refused to do absolutely anything. And so they literally took a day off. Now the men of Iceland tried their best to prepare as much as they could because they knew that this day was coming. So they tried their best, you know, to try and prepare for it. But regardless of how much they tried to prepare, this day was a complete catastrophe for them. So even this, when when people like Myron and like he, they use this 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 argument a lot that if women disappeared, men would still be able to survive and just live out our lives. No, you can't. You really can't. Who's gonna take care of the kids? Who's running all these things to make sure you're be able to do your job? Who are you selling to? Most of our industry is service and sales. And it, women are the people that we're selling to. If women disappear, who the fuck is buying your shit? Like, come on, people. We're fully intermingled. You guys are fucking so dumb. For the entire country. I was seven when the women of Iceland went on strike on October 24th, 1975. They marched into the center of Reykjavik and filled the streets. 90% of women did no work that day. No schools opened, no banks opened, no kids ate, no buses rode into town. It was impossible to get anything done on that day because when women don't work, nothing works. They changed the impression of the value of women for women and men alike forever because nothing worked in Iceland that day. So they changed the very reality that I grew up with and they changed my view on it forever. It was a complete disaster. Mm -hmm. So much. And remember, these men had time to prepare for this. And in Myron's argument or a lot of us red pillars arguments is if they disappeared right now, we'd be perfectly fine. No, these men had fucking a decent amount of time to prepare and still failed miserably so that the government of Iceland bent the knee and agreed to the women's conditions and implemented them into law the following year. It turned out that all the women needed to do was just take one day off for the men of Iceland to realize just how important they actually were for society. And I'm positive that if it was the men of Iceland who were the ones who went on strike, it would have also been a catastrophe because- get Again, 100% agree with her. She's perfectly right. Yeah, if all the men disappeared or stopped working, yeah. No, no, no goods are getting transported. None of this other stuff like electricity wouldn't be running properly. It'd be a little bit more devastating, but it'd be just as devastating in a sense. <laughs> like it's, it's to the point where it's fuck. Guess what? We both matter. Who would have thought? The men of Iceland have actually experienced what it would be like if women disappeared tomorrow. Whereas many of these red pill guys, all they have is male ego and blissful ignorance because they've never had to live in a society that didn't have any women in it. 100% correct. 
we're born into a society that is fully intermingled people i don't get why people don't understand this part it's not like it was in the like the 1920s or something when yeah they were so separated then yes we didn't need them because they weren't working at the time now that they're working our industry's shifted enough to to accommodate them to where if they disappeared how can our industry shrink back fast enough to be able to, to control everything it's not like that so they're able to talk all this crap because they've taken women for granted because all they've ever known is a society where women are in it and women are fulfilling their important roles. And another comment I saw a lot of as well was, well, men could do women's jobs, but women couldn't do men's jobs. Red pill fans, I beg you just pick up one history book. This, I also agreed with this. World War II, where were all the men? In fucking war. So, but the country still ran, didn't it? Like. We just made it so it's easier for them to do the jobs that men do. This is the equity part where we create tools and items and things to make it easier for weaker people and less knowledgeable people to do the same type of job that a professional used to do. That's the power of America back in the day. But just one, because once again, that is also false. And history proves that to be false because during World War II, when all the men went out to war, women did indeed do men. Isn't like to me, it's even a little crazier because all these women are in heels. Look at them. They're working on tanks, working on cars in heels. <laughs> jobs. But moving on, someone else said, I think there's still a lot of truth in women not wanting to do hard, messy jobs. This it's is true. true men and women both do hard and messy jobs to some extent, but you can't compare a woman working in care to a man working in construction and men, is, and men are far more likely to do dangerous jobs. The that issue I have true. with this yeah. is that you're pushing the goalpost because the initial comment or the initial statement was that women don't do hard jobs or mm -hmm. women don't do physically challenging jobs. So I give examples of the physically challenging jobs that women do and now all of a sudden it's, Okay, right. women do do physically challenging jobs, but they don't do as physically. I notice this quite a bit too. I, even Myron does. Myron does. I, I hate to bring him up a lot, but since these a lot of these talking points he uses very, very harshly, and I agree with Senya. We, we need each other. Like we're not that much more superior than women. We're really not. Even if if we even are in a sense, right? challenging job it's important for us to be reasonable when we're having these arguments you know considering how much the red pill goes on and on and on about how men are physically stronger than women which is a fact men are physically stronger than us you would think that they would also understand that that also has an impact on the types of jobs that women are physically able to do there are going to be limitations on the types of jobs that women can do just because a woman is not able to do the jobs that require a man's amount of strength does not mean that they don't do very physical physically demanding jobs. To dismiss the physically challenging jobs that women do simply because men wouldn't find them physically challenging is like dunking on a toddler as they struggle to pick up a box simply because you as an adult wouldn't struggle to pick it up. So when- I like that, I like that analogy. It's correct. This is what I said, like um, as Americans, we built industries for women that is physically demanding for women. Yes, the physicalness for men, not that bad. But that's why we there's better jobs, in a sense, that require more physicality. Like, the argument that we always say, why don't women go into construction? Why don't women go into bricklaying? Why don't women go into these things? Because they're going to suck at it. They're going to suck at it, and their bodies aren't built for it. Just like the, the bodies aren't built for the military. Why so many women in their 30s now that were career military people have fucked up backs because they had to go through all that regiment training and it was not built for women's bodies. That's all it is. We made things so targeted towards certain sex that there's jobs that are so necessary that men don't even touch nowadays, but only women do, but it's physically demanding for them.
When women go into very, very physically demanding jobs, they're going into the jobs that are very physically demanding for them. So the statement that women don't do physically demanding jobs is false because women do do very physically demanding jobs for their physical strength level. This is why I say competing men and women just doesn't make any logical I, sense because I we agree. are apples and oranges. Like we, you can't really compare us because of we are biologically different. It would be like me dunking on a man for the fact that he can't give birth. Like imagine I just got to a man and be like, what, you can't give birth, bro? But you can't push a baby you out your bitch. <laughs> that literally makes no sense because you have to consider <laughs> biological limitations. I do also think there is something to be said about how we very much disregard and belittle all of the jobs that are more traditionally feminine. Because this is something that really irritates me about feminists and how mm. they will celebrate a woman who chooses to be a CEO of a company, but a woman who chooses to prioritize her family and choose to- Like to be the, the head of the house? To, I mean, as in like the house house, not the household. Like my mom, head of the house, anything that needed for the house, she took care of, bought everything, took care of everything. My dad was the head of the household. When major things happened, he handled it. But like things with that pertain to the actual house or the home itself, my mom handled to get married and become a full-time mother taking care of her children with no break. To them, that's not worthy of acknowledgement because they view that as inferior and weaker compared to a woman who chooses to do more traditionally masculine roles. And people with- And it's funny because men view it the opposite where feminism view it this way. We view childbirthing and and mothering as, as men ourselves as probably the highest esteem that we see women doing. At least most men, I would assume and the red pill and also red pill women themselves are also guilty of this exact same behavior they'll see the roles that women dominate in society and they'll be like yeah women dominate that but that's not that hard oh yeah women might be the dominant ones in oh fuck no i do not want to be a nurse i do not want to clean up those shits i do not want to deal with these patients i've been in the hospital quite a few times and i've had some crazy patients next to me or next door to me and stuff like that and hearing the nurses have to deal with these people i don't think men really know what the fuck healthcare workers actually have to go through like other than like male nurses of course but like <laughs> nurses go through a whole ring of shit like literally in those kind of positions but that's not exactly that hard it's not exactly as hard as the jobs that men do so there's no misunderstanding i am not looking down or denying the importance that male dominated industries play within society they're extremely important but my point is how can you say that a nurse's job is less important or that it's not very hard simply because it's not an infrastructure job why is your metric for whether something is hard or valuable strictly masculine now in regards oh, to the last shit she ain't wrong with that one. Why do we always measure everything through masculinity, even comparing with women? That's a good thought. It's a good thought. Part of their comment where they said that men are much more likely to do dangerous jobs. That is true. Men are more likely to do We're more idiots. dangerous jobs. Men are more likely to take risks in general We're than idiots. women. And the arguments for why this is, is due to like biological differences as well. Yeah, Would you is. look at that? Biology. Mm -hmm. It's important, isn't it? And mm -hmm. the evolutionary biology reasons that have been put forward for that is that women being reckless or risky would well, be very bad for our species. Correct. But when you consider the fact that women are the ones who carry babies, it wouldn't be good if women were just out here taking risks. Imagine a pregnant woman who just loves a cheeky risk. It wouldn't be very good because the more risky you are, the more likely you are to pass away. And women passing away isn't very good because women are the ones who carry children. Interestingly enough, this is also the reason reason why during times of war men are the ones who go out and fight and women are the ones who are usually um evacuated and like yeah. saved so one of the reasons why this is is because men are stronger than us and they're also faster than us so they do better when it comes to physical combat etc but another reason as to why women are usually the ones who are who are evacuated society can afford to lose more men than it can afford to lose women if that makes sense because mm -hmm. during times of war typically you know, you lose a chunk of your population because there will be some people who die at war. So you need to be able to replace it. And so if you have 10 men, but only one woman, you're only gonna have one baby. But if you had 10 women and one man, then you'd have 10 babies and a very, very happy man. So for these reasons, society yeah, has always kind of been man. geared towards trying to protect women. And so when you think about our biology, a lot of the stuff that we do is hardwired towards our survival. Oh, you know, like the, the risk thing. Because to be mediocre is 
a death sentence almost in even back in those days if you weren't useful in some way you weren't going to get a woman anyways so might as well take a big risk go to war go off in the distance kill some people or hunt some things and, and explore and come back with riches or something that proves that you're better than that average better than that normal guy and this is why and if you died it was okay society would still move on right but if you came back you were a hero you became the top five percent top ten percent man because you did the unthinkable and able to come back it takes risk right even life nowadays you know how many risks i take a lot less than i did when i was younger but i still take a lot of risk in business why because i outweigh the risk and the reward and if the reward is a big enough reward for a certain amount of risk i almost always take it but why because eh, the risk doesn't hurt me that bad you know, the downside of this risk is bad but i can survive but the upside is i'll be made i take those types of risks and so in order for us to maintain our survival we need to be able to maintain the ones within our species who are able to create life so that's where that protective instinct for women comes from it's yeah and, and then women on the other side always think that oh we weren't given the privilege to fight no because you were so valuable this is the part i don't understand women don't understand. you were so valuable and you are still so valuable. We don't want you guys to go fight and die because we need you. We need you. Not that we need you. Most men are actually very forward processing in a sense that we need you for society. Society needs women, all right? If all men died but one and every single woman was still alive, that man is just gonna have a lot of work on his hands and needs a lot of fluids and he will repopulate the whole world with just himself it's not the same the other way around that's the problem it's a very subconscious thing and a lot of the time you don't even realize that you're doing it but that is what drives that protective nature mm -hmm. now if i wanted to be a petty feminist i could use this as an as an excuse to justify why women are the ones who are superior and why women are more important than men i still don't believe that means women are more important because the way i see it is like this women have the unique uh, as men i think Yes, actually women are a little bit more important. Men can do what we, I mean, we built the world, we can do all this, but the next generation to me is way more important than actually building. The gift of bringing life into the world, but they lack the physical strength to be able to fully protect it. Yeah. Whereas men have the gift of strength, which allows them to protect the life that is brought into the world. Because what good is it to have the gift of bringing life into the world if you can't fully protect it? And what good is having the gift of strength if you have nothing to build for and or nothing protect. to protect? So yeah. Yes. What is the point of living if you don't want to strive to protect and service the people around you, your loved ones and your family? That's what we were put here on this earth for. My honest goddamn opinion. That we were here to protect and serve. Why? Who do we protect and serve? We protect and serve our family. We protect and serve our loved ones, our friends, ourselves, our partners. This is what men were made to do. And the men that don't want to take up this mantle, get the fuck out of here. Just get the fuck out of here. Go die somewhere in a ditch or whatever it is. Like, this is what we have to do. I, this, you don't have to be good at it, but you have to at least strive to do it. You have nothing to protect. You're a nothing. You are nothing, nothing. I will always push back on anyone who tries to argue that men are more <clears throat> important than women or women are more important than men. I recently listened to Andrew Schultz and Chris Williamson give their two cents on what they believe attracts young men to the red pill, as well as what they personally thought about the manosphere. And I thought it was quite interesting, so I'll share that with you. The manosphere, give me your <laughs> thoughts on the manosphere. Yeah, what about the man? Manosphere has always existed. It just got less funny. That's my issue with it. Yeah. It's like, be funny. So, yeah. Be funny about whatever it is. Like, like my my favorite comedian, the greatest comedian of all time, uh, hands down, is Patrice O'Neill. Like, Patrice O'Neill is early Manosphere. Like, rest I don't know if you watch rest in peace. any of his stuff. Like, I'm early Manosphere. Like, my stuff, I've got jokes that are, like, perfectly aligned with Manosphere shit, but they're jokes. It's funny. What was so great about Tate was he was funny. Like, Mark was telling us this one thing. I didn't even see this one. He's like, I'll never let a girl drive my car. 
He goes, uh, they're like, why? He goes, have you ever uh, thrown something at your girl and she caught it? (laughs) 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 Like, like, like that's just a hilarious, that joke could go on stage. Like, you could take, he's got lines you could take and go on stage. And that's why it was so effective. It's like, it it, it tapped into almost like Borscht Belt comedy. Remember, have you heard of like the Borscht Belt? Like, old back in the day comedy, like the, take my wife, please. These one-liners, right? Mm -hmm. These one-liners were all incredibly offensive. But they tap into feelings that we have. And our feelings are not the things we execute. You get cut off. You want to be like, I want to fucking kill that person. But you don't really kill them. It's a momentary feeling. So you have frustration with your wife. The take my wife, please. Everybody in the audience, every husband who's dealt with their wife bitching about something, you know, in the, oh, I, I relate to that moment. I relate to that feeling. Because comedy is about feelings. It's not about truth. Yeah. It's not about what should be true. It's about a feeling that is real that you've had. So... I think what happens with these jokes is they tap into moments of what it is like to be a guy in this day and age. And then not funny people got into it and ruined it like everything and then started taking every single line seriously. Yes. And then when you start taking every single line seriously, you just. I. I... He, he hit it, hit the, the nail on the head. I, I got it right this time. The nail on the head. <laughs> Like, that is exactly what happened. I love Patrice. I watched him when I was younger. I watched a lot of Tom Like. I heard or well, listened to a lot of Tom Likas, too. The way he said things, it was, like, very outlandish and just kind of funny about it. Nowadays, when you hear Myron or someone say it, he's so dead serious on it. And he's like, you have to understand how I'm saying it. And it's just like, no, just make a joke. Make light of it. Like, the world is built on feelings, in a sense. Right. Because you need to feel something to do something. If you don't have the feeling or the urge to want to do anything. You won't do anything. That is part of your feelings. You know, like knowing that you have to do something is you battling with your feelings and your logic. Say, I don't want to do it, but I know I got to do it. Do I really want to do it? Yeah, fuck, I got to do it. So I'm going to go do it. Right. So when the, when we talk about logic as so logical, no, I mean, yes, men are a little bit more logical, but we still have to go through our feelings. We have to go through our feelings and balance out the cons and pros, which is logical, but it still encompasses our feelings, right? Because we know, all right, so I lose this much, but I gain this much, but the, this I'm losing, is it worth it for me to lose? When I'd be devastated if I lost this. It's part of our feelings. It's both. Just seem like you're hate women, you're angry at women, you're bitter. That's not. I don't think anybody really at the end of the day wants to resonate with that. The fundamental way that it's positioned is that men and women are enemies or adversaries. Yeah, they're trying to extract something from you. Yeah, It's kind of dangerous to think about like that. I don't know. It doesn't seem like a particularly healthy way to create a foundation to build stuff up from that. Another one of the influences here as well. I went to Miami for the first time ever um, two and a half, three weeks ago. Yeah. And um, a lot of what I was seeing online in men's advice made a lot more sense after I'd been to Miami. (laughs) Miami unlocked the back of my brain in terms of going, oh. Like what? What were you saying? So, for instance... Uh, your wealth is your primary uh, source of value to the world. Who you are, the person that you're with, the table that you're on, the size of the bottle, the girls that are on your arm, what it is that the girls, how they were dressed, like girls out in party dresses, maxi party dresses at 12 midday going for coffee in heels. Like, where the f*** are you going? What is this? And that to me made a lot of sense because it seems like a good chunk of Miami culture very transactional, very transient, mm-hmm. very resource-based. Well, I, you know what? Maybe this is why Refresh and Fit are the way they are. They are Miami-based. They they see this lifestyle. They see this constantly. Has informed a lot of men's advice on the internet. And because of that, they're reverse engineering. Miami is how all women are. Right, right. No, it's not. I've met half a million women in my life stood on the front door of nightclubs. Yeah. No, it's not. Yeah, yeah. Most yeah. women, on average, are caring and kind and want a guy that they can get into a relationship with that cares about them yeah some of them fuck up and some of them are outright mean yeah. and nasty and all the rest of it but so are guys yeah like i just my personal experience which is vast 
does not suggest that girls are like the ruthless gold diggers that everybody says. However, I agree. I can agree. Through personal experience, I have not met very many gold diggers. Like the people, through the women I've dated. I've seen these women, but I have not personally like dated these women. I see them all around me uh, when I go out and things like that. But dating wise, I don't get too many of these women. They don't, well, at least these types of women don't go towards my type of guy, I guess. But I agree that there's, there is a good chunk of women that are Miami women or Miami type women. I just went to a Cambodian concert for New Year or Cambodian New Year's concert Sunday. What was it Sunday? Oh, it was Saturday. My bad. Saturday. And most of the women there were pretty trashy. We're all fully tatted. And these are all Cambodian women. They were all wearing skimpiest of skimps, you know, dancing the, the most provocative ways of dancing. And these are Cambodian women that we were in a Cambodian concert where they were singing Cambodian songs. So, like, yes, they were somewhat Americanized, but they were still very homeland in a sense. I, I felt like they were more homeland than I was when I was there. And, yeah, they were. I saw more trashy ones than I saw normally dressed, modestly dressed ones. Again, yes, this was a concert and it was an event, so I can see where the more wild women would come out. But it was a, like a New Year's concert, so I want to disagree a little bit about it, but yeah. Think about you're a guy on the Same. internet. You're a guy on the internet yeah. who doesn't have much experience with women. So what you do is you start consuming content from people who seem like they do. And or maybe they're consuming content that feeds your fears. Precisely. But what are the sort of stories that are sufficiently newsworthy to break through onto the internet? They're the most egregious transgressions of this yeah. particular. It's the, the girl that got into a relationship with some Canadian guy and took all of his money and now he lives on the street and yeah, yeah. he can't ever see his kids and his dog hates him. And, and while what? he was sleeping, went out, fucked a guy in a gas station, yeah, came back. Came back like, yeah. That's a real story Made him that lick a girl it. told. Like, yeah. yeah, all of that. Yeah. Those are the stories that break through. So if you don't have real world experience that can disprove that. Yeah quite rightly, you're vehemently going to think these bitches are out here trying yeah. to fucking get us. I need yeah. to be horribly uncertain whenever I'm around yeah, a woman. Yeah. Like, I don't blame the guys for thinking it, to be honest with you. I think that like there's a lot of frustration when you're not in control of your sexual destiny. And there's two ways to handle that frustration. There's, there's one is go inward, the other is go outward, right? I'm frustrated. It's like, well, what can I do to alleviate that frustration? Can I like get better at chat? Can I learn what these girls are interested in and like how to make them feel comfortable, right? Or do I justify that frustration? By this is where like a lot of men are like, oh, why would I want to improve myself to be with a woman that's just going to take all my shit? No, you improve yourself to find a good woman that won't take your shit. Because the chances of you finding a good woman the way you are is slim to none. So you always have to improve to at least get the, to the better echelon of women. And yes, there's bad women out there, but there's good women out there. That's why I, you know, you guys hear me say, I still try. I still try to date in the U.S. I still try to find someone in the U.S. I got about three, four years left of it before I decide to go fully to the passport bros and just get a wife out there in Cambodia. I'm going to try three, four more years because I'm not, I'm traveling a little bit. I'm starting to travel again now, but I don't plan on moving for another three to four years. So, but I'm going to, so in that time span, I'm going to give myself three, four years to see if I can find a good woman out here. Why? Because why not? Like you're not going to win if you don't play the game, right? That's, that's it. And men are just like, oh, why would I have to do like buy these things just to play a game? Do you want to win the game or not, man? Like if the game requires you to like dress a little bit better, have a little bit of better lifestyle, work towards a lifestyle, work towards getting better dressed, work towards for a better job. Everything just comes along with it. You're, you don't have to like play the game to try to get women. This is the part where I think a lot of men are like, I, I have to do this to get women. No, you do this for yourself, for your self improvement. But women happens to come along, and you take, and then you can pick and choose from there. By going outward, which is all women are gold diggers. They don't like me because I'm 
and short or they don't like me because I'm skinny or they don't like me because I'm poor or yada, yada, yada. I thought this conversation that they had was really interesting it was because I feel like it solid. just kind of confirms um, my theory, which is that most of our societal problems just stem from people being chronically online, to yeah. be honest. Because like they were saying, <laughs> if if many of these guys who have these hostilities towards women, if they were going outside and having more experiences with women and actually talking to women, then they'd be able to have personal experiences that would contradict the stuff that they're seeing online. The same goes for women, to be honest. Like I saw this video on Twitter where this woman was absolutely petrified of a man who came to approach her. Now that I rewatched this, she's actually genuinely shooken up. Isn't she? So, this just put some, some new thoughts in my mind that, yeah, media has put women such on edge about men. And if they don't experience enough men, they just go by those experiences that other men, women are telling them or the books that are telling them. And yeah, she's genuinely petrified because this scenario is similar to how she read in a book. Interesting. Interesting. I see. I see. I guess we made fun of it the first time. Yeah, I still can kind of make fun of it now. It's just that she was so fearful of men. Mm. Mm. This makes me think. This makes me think. See, this is the part I have an issue with. So she's experienced this weirdness. And now she's putting on this advice to, if this weirdness ever happens to other people, to handle it the exact same way she did. I see where... <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Grew off. No male should be approaching you in a parking lot. Aside from the fact that whoever wrote the book that she read, where she got this technique from, clearly ripped off Dora the Explorer. And I just kept saying it. <laughs> I just realized it when she said that. It was like, swiper, no swiping! Swiper, no swiping! <laughs> Oh shit! Oh, fucking Zenya. Over and over and over, I said, "Do not approach me! Do not approach me!" Swiper, no swiping! Swiper, no swiping! Swiper, no swiping! Dora should sue. The blatant disrespect—they're just out here stealing her anti-crime techniques. But yeah, all jokes aside though, I just don't think it's healthy to have this much anxiety around the opposite sex. I now, I don't know this woman's story. Maybe she's experienced something traumatic in the past, which is making her very fearful and kind of projecting that experience onto the situation. However, I do know that there are a lot of women who feel this way, even without having any previous experience 
with something like this. And it is coming from the fact that they see a lot of stuff online. They see a lot of stuff that basically essentially tells them that because they're women, they are inevitably going to be victims of some kind of crime in one way or another. And although I agree that you should, as a woman, avoid risky situations and avoid putting yourself in potential danger, this is quite over the top. Like she could have just dropped her keys or her card and he could have been trying to give it to her her maybe she forgot something when she was at the till before she got to the parking lot and he was just trying to give it back to her she has no idea why he was calling her but she just assumed because he's a man that it was likely going to be dangerous and so yeah so i do think that us being chronically online uh is a bit of a problem do you know what i mean mm -hmm. oh yeah before i forget some of you have been commenting um that pearl responded to my video i did i did see the response video that she made to me and i have to give pearl oh. credit she took the video really well let me clear up some falsehoods i do not hate pearl like i know that some people are convinced that i hate pearl just because i criticized her because any criticism of anyone automatically means that you hate them i actually agree with pearl on some of the points that she makes on her on her podcast when she's not trolling you know because mm -hmm. pearl loves a good cheeky troll like that that girl loves to troll when she's not trolling she does actually sometimes make some really good points so in her response video she respectfully pushed back on the comments that i made about her anti-marriage um sentiments and so and Pearl's point is basically that because she's spoken to so many of these men who've who've been really shafted by divorce court and family court etc like she just doesn't feel like she can in good faith promote marriage so I understand what motivates Pearl to have the perspective that she has on marriage it seems to me that it's rooted in her compassion for men and while I completely understand that because I don't disagree with Pearl about the disadvantages that men experience from um from divorce etc because I I agree like there's no debate to be had there mm -hmm. I just disagree with her solution because her solution is very much throwing away the baby with the bathwater but I don't think she's considered what the ripple effect of that will be other than that stop spreading rumors that I hate pal okay I don't make a habit of hating people I don't know and have never met it's very weird well that is the end of this video if you enjoyed it then do like and subscribe I am also how was that chow I know I talked a lot on that one I had a lot to say but I just I want us to do well I want us men to do well I want us to find partners and not be so jaded towards women to where we're not even gonna look for them anymore. We don't even care for them anymore. Like, if a good portion of men just don't care for women anymore, as in like to even protect them, to even like want to be with them, society is not even society anymore. If that's the case, then just go live on your own. You know, like go into the mountains, do your own thing. Because <laughs> what else is there to do? As men, you know, like, just me personally, like, I, I'm not trying to push this on everyone, but this is just my take on how relationships should go out and how men should at least strive for it, right? So, please like and subscribe down below, I'd really appreciate that, and I'll catch you guys next time.